This is the White Coat Investor Podcast, Milestones to Millionaire, celebrating stories of success along the journey to financial freedom. This is Milestones to Millionaire Podcast number 105, Public Health Dentist Pays Off Student Loans. This episode is sponsored by All Global Circle. You have valuable knowledge and can always use a little extra money. The All Global Circle community is set up to provide a clear, easy, and efficient means of communication between the pharmaceutical industry, the research industry, and those professionals who are using new developments and end products on an ongoing daily basis. If All Global Circle can't get you a survey to take within 90 days, they'll pay you a loyalty bonus just for logging in and checking a couple of times per month. By signing up at whitecoatinvestor.com global, you'll get an extra $50 just for being a member of the WCI community. All right. Welcome to the Milestones to Millionaire podcast. Uh, We've been doing this now for a little over two years, just highlighting the accomplishments of the WCI community. Whatever accomplishment you may have, I don't care if it's paying off your $5,000 beater loan or whether it is becoming a multi-deca millionaire, we'll celebrate it with you on this podcast and use your experience to inspire others to do the same. If you'd be willing to come on, you can apply at whitecoatinvestor.com slash milestones. All right, we've got a great guest on today. Let's get her on. Our guest today on the Milestones to Millionaire podcast is Elena. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. All right. I understand that you have uh, accomplished a recent milestone. We want to congratulate you on that. Before we get into it, Tell us what you do for a living, how far you are out of school, and what part of the country you live in. I am a general dentist. I work in public health. I graduated dental school in 2017, and then I did a one-year general practice residency that I finished in June of 2018, and I am in Southern Oregon. All right. So you live on the best coast, you were telling me just before we started recording. I like to think so, yeah. All right. Uh, Okay. Well, you have accomplished a milestone that I think many dentists would love to accomplish and have not yet accomplished. You have paid off your student loans. I have. Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. And it sounds like your grand total, including $10,000 in undergraduate loans, was $283,000. That sounds right. you did that in just four and a half years after finishing residency. That's pretty awesome. How'd you do it? I did it a few different ways or used a couple different tools. First of all, I work in a federally qualified health center here in Oregon. And so that allowed me to be eligible for the National Health Service Corps uh, loan repayment program. So I didn't get the scholarship in dental school, but I did apply for a program called Students to Service in my fourth year of dental school. That was initially a three-year commitment that earned me $120,000 in loan repayment. And then I committed for one additional year for another $20,000. So it was an initial, or it was a total four-year commitment for $140,000 of loan repayment. I paid most of the rest off just in monthly payments. I tried to maximize my payments at the beginning of COVID when the, the, loan or the interest freeze was announced, I really had to make a decision if I wanted to go for PSLF or if I wanted to just pay down my loans and be done with them. And I chose the latter. I really wanted the flexibility of having my loans gone. I wanted the flexibility of not necessarily having the 10-year PSLF commitment. And so at the beginning of COVID, I just committed to all extra money that I had went towards my loans. I also had some help from family. Um, My My grandfather passed away a couple of years ago and um, was very generous in what he left me and my my cousins. Um, So I had about $50,000 from him um, to to finish off the payment. So all kinds of sources, your own earnings, this money from the National Health Service Corps, uh, a little bit of money from grandpa, you threw it all at the loans, you knocked them out in four and a half years. Well done. Thanks. So can you tell us a little bit? Uh, I mean, this is obviously a PSLF uh, qualifying job. This is a job that qualified for some additional loan repayment. Often that means you get paid less than what you could make out in a typical private practice job. Can you tell us a little bit about your income over the last four and a half years? 
Yeah, it it ranged as as a resident, I made what residents make. So that I was in Washington, D.C. I was about 60000 um, And then in my current role, I am a salaried provider. So the, my salary ranged from about 140000 to about 175000 during my payoff period. Okay. So, uh, you know, I mean, people have to decide how much of my money is going to go toward, you know, saving up down payments, building up an emergency fund, maxing out retirement accounts versus paying off student loans. How did you come to that decision of of how much of your money went to where? To your advice, I really wanted to live like a resident um, as after I finished my residency. And so I think I was able to continue to pay down my loans and also save towards some other financial goals while enjoying a nice life here in Oregon. And so I rent my home. I own my car. I don't have a car payment. Um, My rent here is quite minimal. I don't have kids. Um, I'm not married. And so I can live a pretty low cost lifestyle. And that allowed me the flexibility to prioritize paying off my loans. And then also I was able to also maximize my 403B and Roth, um, Roth IRA during the time. So I think minimizing my lifestyle outside of my other financial goals really allowed me to prioritize those things. You know what I really like about your story is that it is, it's kind of a little bit of everything, right? It's not that you did it all yourself, right? You took advantage of programs that the government had. You took advantage of a little bit of help, but you also, you know, did your part. You lived like a resident. You you put money toward, you know, investments, but also paid off on the loans. You knocked them out in less than five years. And this is all on an income, you know, of, of about half of what your loans were. I mean, you had to 2x student loans to income ratio, just about, and you still knocked it out, which I think is pretty awesome to do that in in less than five years and really represents pretty significant commitment and dedication to the goal. So I think that's pretty cool. Well, thank you. Uh, Looking back, was it easier or harder than you thought it was going to be? I think most of the time it was easier. There were... There were times when I sat down with my spreadsheet and looked at that that total number at the bottom and it wasn't going down as fast enough as I wanted it to be going down or as fast enough as it felt like I had been contributing to my loans. And on a day-to-day basis, I was not thinking much about my loans. I had set up my budget in a way that my my loan payment and my retirement contributions and my other savings goals came out of my paycheck first. And so I never even saw that money to miss it in the first place. And so I think that really helped it to feel like it was an automated or integrated part of my life instead of this extra burden on, on top of everything else. Speaking of feeling, how does it feel to have them gone, to know that this debt that's been hanging over your head, what, for for nine-ish plus years is now gone? How does that feel? Yeah, over nine years. I graduated college in 2011. So um, if we count undergrad loans in there, over over, over that. Um, it feels great. <laughs> it, the moment that I paid them off was very non non-monumental. I just clicked the submit button on my AidVantage account. But now that they've been gone for a couple of months, I've been starting to see the benefits of that added flexibility, that I have additional cash flow every month, that I can start saving for a down payment um, and saving for other financial goals in the future. So that's been fun and has felt like a little bit of a, a an encouragement with each paycheck that I get having that extra flexibility. How much influence do you think having that student loan burden had on the job you chose when you came out of your residency? I was pretty sold on public health before any loan considerations. I really like the population that I get to work with. I really like being able to collaborate with other dentists in my clinic. I really like the 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 mission of the organization that I work for and I had done some other work in health equity and education equity before dental school. So my mind was pretty set on public health before I even learned of the 
the loan benefits. So it was more of a cherry on top or a sugar coating um, to make make that career path more appealing. But I would not say that my choice was 100% influenced by the financial benefits. Not planning on uh, not planning on leaving the job then. Not anytime soon. No. Nope. No. Do they give you a raise when they stop making those loan payments for you? <laughs> no. That's something that we talk about at at our clinic is that it's quite funny that our our compensation drops drastically when we complete our NHSC commitments or uh, finish loan repayment terms and. And that's okay. It's kind of goes with the territory. We know the timeline of it, but no, no raise when, when that finished. You know, I find that interesting because in the military, you qualify for an additional bonus once your commitment is up. Interesting. So, interesting. Uh, I, I think it's, I think it's a little odd that uh, NHSC folks are kind of getting hosed there. So <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see that change in the future. All right, let's go back five years. Yeah. Okay, to somebody that's coming out of dental school, someone's coming out of residency, uh, they're listening to this. They're like, that's awesome. I want to do that. What advice do you have for that person? I think, first of all, ask for help. Uh, I went to Oregon Health and Science University. And at the time, they had a really awesome loan advisor that was able to sit down with me and look at each of my loans and actually give me advice to say, you need to pay off these two loans to be eligible for repay that loan repayment program. And um, having those little tangible pieces of information was great. So wherever you can get help, seek it out, whether that's talking to someone that graduated a year before you, listening to these podcasts, reading Dr. Dolly's book, um, those are all awesome opportunities for help. And then sit down and make a budget my budget, I didn't follow daily. I didn't track my expenses daily, but sitting down, I just did it in Excel and seeing where my money would go after after my financial goals was really helpful. And having, I, I called it a, a big rocks approach. I, I paid my big rocks first and then let the small rocks like the lattes or the date night or the nice dinner come in after my retirement had been funded, my loans had been paid and my savings accounts had been contributed to. And that really helped me. So I think those would be my two pieces of advice. Seek help, ask questions and make a budget where, make a budget that reflects your priorities. Yeah, that's great advice. You know, the ability to use a spreadsheet, and I'm not talking about any complicated functions with the spreadsheet, just the ability to, you know, add and subtract with the spreadsheet is an amazingly underrated skill. And I think the vast majority of people who are do-it-yourself investors that become financially successful have that skill. So for all you listeners out there, if you've never messed around with the spreadsheet, if you find it intimidating to open Microsoft Excel, I would encourage you to get over that fear. I think it really is a, a, a very important skill. Yeah. You don't well, even Elena, need Excel. Congratulations to you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you can you, you can, can do it in Google Sheets. Google Sheets. I, yeah. I mean, you could do it on a piece of paper. It's really the same thing. But congratulations to you. You've done something pretty awesome. $283,000 in student loans gone on an income of around $150,000 a year in just four and a half years. Uh, it's inspiring. I know others who are in similar situations will take inspiration from it. So thank you for coming on the podcast to share your story. Thanks for having me. All right. I thought that was a great episode, a fantastic example of somebody that doesn't make all that much money, who actually qualified by virtue of the job for PSLF, but decided to pay off her student loans anyway, using a variety of different sources of money, some from the employer, some from an inheritance, some from her own earnings. Uh, I think it really demonstrates a lot. Uh, a lot of times we get criticism on this podcast. That person's not exactly like me. They didn't have as much student loans as me. Their parents helped them more than me. They make a gazillion dollars. Uh, they have a PSLF qualifying job, whatever it might be that people take the fact that the guest is not exactly like them and use it as an excuse to not be financially successful, whatever that means for you, whether that means paying off loans or building net worth, whatever. What I would encourage you to do instead is look for the parts that are like you and use those to inspire yourself to accomplish your own goals. Okay, This is somebody who had a 2x ratio 
right, owed twice as much money in student loans as she was earning. And despite that, still managed to be out of student loan debt in less than five years without apparently depriving herself, right? Yes, she doesn't spend all that much money. She lived like a resident for a few years, but she no longer has to do that anymore. She can use her entire income to do whatever she wants. She now has that flexibility that we all want. And that's really the whole point here is being able to live the life we want because we put our financial ducks in a row. She's done it. You can too. Uh, Keep tuning in to this podcast and we'll keep showing you how others have done it. uh, And hopefully you will find that you can also do it. This episode was sponsored by All Global Circle. You have valuable knowledge and can always use a little extra money. The All Global Circle community is set up to provide a clear, easy, and efficient means of communication between the pharmaceutical industry, the research industry, and those professionals who are using new developments and end products on an ongoing daily basis. If All Global Circle can't get you a survey to take within 90 days, they'll pay you a loyalty bonus just for logging in and checking a couple of times per month. By signing up at whitecoatinvestor.com slash global, you'll get an extra $50 just for being a member of the WCI community. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you on Thursday with the regular White Coat Investor podcast and next Monday with the Milestones to Millionaire podcast. In the meantime, keep your head up, shoulders back. You've got this and we can help. We'll see you next time. The hosts of the White Coat Investor podcast are not licensed accountants, attorneys, or financial advisors. This podcast is free entertainment and information only. It should not be considered professional or personalized financial advice. You should consult the appropriate professional for specific advice relating to your situation.